I didn't just start making vegan foods, I started making vegan foods that are, dare I say, bougie. I mean, they're kind of like fancy cheeses and like fancy spreadable meats and, you know, ratatouilles and casseroles and things, because A, that's what we are used to eating, and B, I'm not interested in just having a square block of tofu. Hi, I'm Ellen Imkova, and today we're gonna make three vegan cheeses. I experienced this huge transformation when I started eating clean. I would wake up in the morning and be like, Boom! I'm digesting fast, I feel very energized. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm human. I cheated along the way, and over the years I discovered that having a break, having a cheat, doesn't mean like, that's it, you're done, like you're out of the vegan club. What it really means is you're on this journey to eat cleaner, eat better. If you're not completely vegan or you don't want to be completely vegan, that's okay. You don't have to be there all the way, you don't have to be a 10. You know, but you can be a 6.5. You know, it's better than being a three. Vegan cheeses are gonna taste similar to regular cheeses. They're not going to be exact replicas. If somebody is going to taste a vegan cheese and say, well, this doesn't taste like milk, I'm gonna say, well, you are right. So one of my favorite ways to use the mozzarella is in the summertime with a slice of fresh, beautiful, ripe tomato, a little basil. You can drizzle even a little olive oil on there. It also works really great melted. You can melt it on a pizza. You can stuff it inside a vegan calzone with some of the cashew ricotta. One of the other reasons that in my recipe we boil the cashews first, it cooks some of the cashewness out and it kind of assimilates it a little more to dairy. So this cheese is really great to use in lasagna. You could use this in stuffed shells. With any pasta, you can whisk this in and just pump up the flavor and the creaminess. You know, I kind of think people are angry at vegans because vegans are angry at them. But to shame people for what they're eating, I don't think that works. There's so many great, awesome things out there that can replace meat and dairy these days that I say, all right, well, we're not gonna take it away. Why don't we offer you this other thing to try? Try it. If it doesn't kill you, try it again. If it doesn't kill you more, guess how many other beings it's not killing. We know now that because of climate change and because of our depletion of resources, that the amount of meat and dairy that we are producing now, we can no longer continue to produce at that rate, at that volume, to satisfy our growing population. But if that's how we're trained to eat and that's what we know about food, it's helpful to have like a transitional food. I loved cheese and we can create creaminess and we can create a lot of things that we want from cheese, from a sweetness to a meltiness, those things are all happening. The point of the story is if you're reducing your animal consumption, if you're reducing the impact it has on the environment, you're reducing the impact it has on your body, and you're reducing the impact it has on all of those animals, you can eat a little bit less meat and a little bit less dairy and start to feel better. All right. Mm. Mm. Good job. <laughs>